Hi folks, Jackie Gleason here, and uh, this lesson, this geometry lesson, is the second one uh, on segments and congruence. But first, let's go ahead and do um, uh, a board problem, uh, board problem two, and I don't know what your date is, but this will be my board problem for this lesson, uh, so the date will probably be different on this, so uh, this was last August of 2012. Uh, two flat walls meet in the corner of a classroom. Which best describes this situation? Okay, so remember two flat walls. Look at two flat walls in the classroom. Okay, and then look where they meet. Okay, in that corner. Do you see that corner right there? What best describes that? Through any three non-collinear points or is exactly one plane? Uh, I don't know. I see a line back there, but uh, if two points lie in a plane, uh, then the line that contains them lies in a plane? No, that's that's a theorem that you're going to see later on, you guys. Uh, uh, if two lines intersect, then their intersection is exactly a point? No. If uh, if two planes intersect, then their intersection is exactly one line. That's the one right there. They, they intersect in that line right there. Okay? So here we go. Segments and congruence, you guys. So uh, some definitions right here. Postulate, you guys. And I, we write postulate so many times that I, I abbreviate them as POST, P-O-S-T. Um, and sometimes in old school, they used to call them axioms, you guys. So I'll never call them axioms again. In fact, I don't think you'll ever see them again as axioms except for this one lesson. Uh, but a postulate is just a statement that we assume to be true without proof. In geometry, all we're doing is proving, you guys. You guys, proving are, um, they're as fun, as much fun as word problems. You know, remember those fun word problems you do in algebra? Well, that same feeling that you get with word problems, you're going to get the same wonderful feeling with proofs. Yippee! I tell my kids, um, um, as long as you let me and try to, to help you on this and don't just put up a brick wall that says, I can't do proofs, I can help you. As long as you don't put that brick wall up, you guys, I will baby step them through. Okay, so trust me, we'll just baby step. So a statement uh, that is proved is called a theorem. And again, we write theorem so often, I abbreviate them as THM. Okay, uh, so the ruler postulate. So this is something we're going to assume to be true without proof. Okay, so points on a line are assigned a number, okay, and they're called uh, the coordinates, you guys. So uh, so just think of a number line, you guys, with letters above it. Uh, and the distance between the points, A and B, remember the distance is a length, you guys, so we would not have anything on top of the A, B, it would just be nothing, this means the length, is the positive difference of their coordinates, so you subtract those numbers above them. Okay, line segments that have the same lengths are congruent and are written like this, a little equal sign with a little squiggly on top. That's the word congruent right there. That's our math symbol for congruent. Okay, we write that so many times. So, right here, if uh, this says right here, if length AB, because there's nothing on top of it, so it means length AB. So, if length AB is equal to length CD, then I can say that those segments are congruent. Segment AB, see how this says segment AB with the segment bar on top of it, is congruent to segment CD. Okay, congruent symbols have segments equal symbols don't have anything on top okay get used to that equal symbols have nothing on top congruencies have can have segments on top okay these are interchangeable just remember which goes with which all right so find the uh, cd okay so here i have ce equals 17 and de equal i'm sorry ce equals 42 de equals 17 i just put a little x right there you guys so then i can use this algebra equation x plus 17 equals 42 subtract 17 and you get 25 so cd was 25 okay so we're going to graph these points negative 2 5 negative 2 3 3, negative 4, 3, and 4, 3, and in the coordinate plane, and so are uh, x, y, and w, z congruent, so are the segments x, y, and segment w, z congruent? All right, so let's go ahead and graph it. There's my coordinate plane. There's x right down there at negative 2, 5, so to the left 2, down 5, and then um, uh, y is at negative 2, 3, so to the left 2, up 3. Okay, this segment has, here's 5, here's 3, so this length right here is 8, you with me, because this is 5, that's 3. Okay, and then when I, uh, so that I know that's 8, and there's w, z. Okay, so this is, um, this side is 4, this side is 4, so that side is, so those guys are both 8, so yes, they are congruent to each other because they both have length 8. Okay, so here's some definitions. The midpoint of a segment is the point that divides the segment into two congruent segments. Okay, so if this is the midpoint, 
then AM is going to be congruent to MB. Segment AM is congruent to MB. All right, so if it's the midpoint. So notice, you guys, um, uh, I can say the length, this says the length of AB equals the length of MB. Okay, or you say segment AB is congruent to segment, uh, I'm sorry, segment AM is congruent to segment MB. Okay, all right, so a uh, segment bisector can be a point. So here's a, this could be a, uh, this could be a segment bisector right here. It could be a ray. So think of a ray that goes, say I have a point right here, and it goes in that direction. It goes on forever and ever and ever up there. It could be a ray. It could be a line. So here's a line that uh, that goes forever through there. So it's a segment bisector. Could be a plane. Can you see like a mm, like a piece of paper? Can you see a piece of paper slicing this guy right in half? So anything that goes right through the midpoint is called a segment bisector. Okay, segment addition postulate. Okay, so if X is between A and B, can you see X between A and B on segment AB? Okay, if that's the case, then what this is going to say is that this little piece right here, uh, segment AX, plus, uh, I'm sorry, the length of AX plus the length of XB is going to be the length of the whole AB. And I always say this piece plus this piece equals the whole piece. Okay, so that's what segment addition postulate says. Piece plus piece equals whole piece. AX, AX plus XB equals the whole AB. All right, wish I could get up there in front of and show you with my hands. Okay, so in the figure, uh, segment MO, segment MO bisects segment uh, NP. So this, is, so if it bisects it, then this is the midpoint of this segment right here. If PQ is 22.6 find PN. Okay, if this is 22.6, since that's the midpoint, this is 22.6. So the whole thing, by segment addition postulate, piece plus piece equals the whole piece. piece. Okay, so there's 22.6, there's 22.6, so the whole length is 45.2. All right, so point S is the midpoint. Okay, if that's the midpoint of segment RT, find ST. So they want me to find this length right here. Okay, if this is the midpoint, then this side equals this side. Okay, so set those expressions equal to each other. 5x minus 2 equals 3x uh, plus 8. So what I did is I subtracted 3x from both sides, and I plused 2 to both sides. Can you see where I get 5x minus 3x is 2x? And then I added 2 to get rid of that negative 2. 8 plus 2 is 10, so x equals 5. Okay, careful, you guys. It's not asking for x equals 5. It's asking for the length of st. So i got to plug in 5 right there, 3 times 5, and then plus 8 to that. So that's going to get me 23. All right. All right, so uh, m is between. Now, it's not the midpoint this time. It's between. So I'm going to use segment addition postulate. I'm going to say this piece plus this piece equals the whole piece. Okay? So, and then after I find X, you guys, then i got to find NO. So I'm going to plug in X right there. Okay? So piece plus piece equals the whole piece. So 17 plus 3X minus 5 equals 5X plus 2. All right, so I'm going to clean that up. I, what I did is I did 17 minus 5 is 12, so I have 3x plus 12 over here. Okay, now I think I'm going to subtract 3x over here and then subtract 12 on both sides. So 5x minus 3x is 2x. 12 minus 2 is, um, is 10, so I get uh, 2x equals 10, and then so x equals 5. Remember, we're not looking for x. You've got to find uh, segment uh, the length of NO, so I'm going to plug in x equals 5 right there. 5 times 5 plus 2 is 27. Okay, now if you were in my class, that would be your homework.